All right, take 17. At least. Well, we haven't even really had a take yet. I know, seriously. It's really the first take. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video on this channel. We have tried to record this video for like the last, how long? Gotta be three hours now. <laughs> Just one problem after another. Seriously. And so if there's another problem, I'm just going to take it as an indicator that like God doesn't want us to put this video out. Mm -mm. Oh, man. Yeah, we've been trying to. Anyway. And it's Valentine's Day. So happy ha Valentine's happy Day. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm I sure. I said it first. Actually, no, technically I said it this morning when you were still asleep. Okay, whatever. <laughs> how long has it been since we made a YouTube video? Like, I forget how to even do this. Now I got to look this up. I feel. Did you know. Uh, Trey Van Camp and his uh, wife just did like a live stream and they were talking about how long so now I feel like we're copying after them. Trey, if you're watching this, we're not copying off of you. He, he's always copying off of you. <laughs> Don't give away my secrets. All right, let's see. So how long do you think it was? Now I'm, now he's really going to think I'm copying him because that's what they did. Without looking, guess. How long has it been since we made a video together? Not counting together? Like, not the two of us? Not counting a vlog, like a sit down talking video. Just the two of us? Yeah. Oh. Six months? Six months. I'm going to say, I haven't looked yet. I'm going to say it was like a year ago at least. I think it was before the pandemic. Oh. Let's see. I guess technically when we did the talking to our daughter about race video, we like sat down and talked, but I'm not counting that. I think it was, yeah, one year ago. <laughs> Is it, we like only do videos together after we take like a long YouTube break, I guess. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, as uh, the title of this video suggested, um, we wanted to talk a little bit about what it's like to be in an interracial relationship in 2021. Uh, I said in our last video that we were starting like the vlog back up and coming back to YouTube in February. I'm not going to get into like what all we've been doing for the last several months. Uh, I'll say this in case you didn't know, if you're new to this channel, uh, I'm a church planter. We are church planters. And, uh, the church has kind of consumed life <laughs> for the last several months. Understatement. Yeah, that is an understatement. I, I wouldn't call this the busiest that I've ever been because I think I think I still think I was busier in uh in seminary. Yeah, the last year of seminary especially. Was that the last year of seminary was like the first year with Ada, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was definitely the busiest year of my life. But uh, this has been the most editing that I've done. And I, I don't want to get into all that. I'm gonna have another video coming out about that soon. Um, but it's been weird that I've been doing more video editing than I ever have in my life and posting less YouTube like videos. Like no videos, yeah. yeah so, um, well, technically, if you count the ones on the church's channel. That's true, yeah. Then I put in, I've been putting out videos every yeah, week then, you right? Have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go subscribe to the Chapel Nordonia YouTube channel. But we, we wanted to make this video not just to talk about what we've been up to. Uh, we, we're going to have some family vlogs coming out pretty soon. We have so much footage that we've been shooting over the past several months but that just hasn't been edited into videos. So I don't You're know. so outdated now. I know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, I don't even know if I should post those other ones yeah. or just like start over. I don't know. Um, but anyway, the video, the topic of this video is to talk about what it's like uh, to be in an interracial relationship in 2021. Um, the, the reason why we wanted to make this video, the reason why I wanted to make this video and we kind of talked about it was uh, we've been asked several times, or at least I've been asked, and I know you've been asked a couple times too, like, what is it like for you guys? Or no, no, how's the question usually phrased? Like, how did you guys survive last year? Yeah, something? like, how did you guys handle or make it through um, all the racial tension of 2020, right. typically? Right, yeah. Something and like along those lines. Exactly. And so we wanted to make this video, uh, one, I'll just, I'll just say it right away, to say, like, for us... <laughs> The racial tension that goes on in the world and, and just all whenever race comes becomes like a frontline issue, it's not like a phase that just like comes and goes. It's not just summer of 2020. Right, exactly. And, and, and in many ways, uh, it, it's almost more difficult. I'll speak for myself personally, and then we can talk about like our relationship together. Uh, you know, race is something that's always at the forefront of my mind as a black man. Um I'm not saying it's the most important thing about me, but it's something that I'm always aware of. Um, and so it almost becomes more frustrating when I see there's issues, but it's like society doesn't want to talk about it anymore. Like, do you feel the same way or? Oh, because like everybody's so tired of. Yeah, like when people are like, oh, I'm just so tired race, of talking about race. So and all that's, I'm like moving on and just kind of skipping over things. Right, yeah. right, exactly. It's, it's not the most important aspect about me. The most important aspect for me is my identity in Christ. But that doesn't lessen the fact that I'm always 
kind of aware of racial things There's going on. There's not a day that doesn't go by where you're not aware that you're a black man. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> like it's always at the front. Of, yeah, exactly. And so it's something we're always talking about. And so it almost becomes more difficult to like deal with the situations and stuff when it's like becomes this, like it's not a talking matter anymore, I guess, for me. I know it's something you're always aware of as well, but I mean, you actually like <laughs> delete, you deleted your Facebook for a couple months and I didn't delete my Facebook. I have just really been on a Facebook hiatus probably since November. Yeah. So I just, I don't know. It was too hard. It was too hurtful. I just couldn't do it anymore without getting upset or angry. So I, for the betterment of my mental health, I had to just kind of take a Facebook break exactly. and I'm kind of still in that Facebook break right. besides like every now and again logging in to see what Chase is up to <laughs> <laughs> or like we'll have a picture post from like my Instagram or something but right right yeah. so I mean we're kind of all over the place Let, let's talk about uh what is it like being in an interracial uh, try that again <laughs> what is it like being in an interracial relationship in 2021 like, if someone was to ask you that, what would you say? I mean, I think if I had to just kind of blanket summarize it, I would say, truthfully, I think it's easier in 2021 than it was, like, for a generation ahead of us, two generations ahead of us. So, like, I feel like it's more commonplace and more accepted to be in an interracial relationship, but that doesn't mean that it's not still without its hardships and that it is, like, blanketly accepted by everyone. Um, and then in some ways, you know, being in an interracial relationship in 2021 in a modern age, that also has its downfalls. Um, you know, just technology doesn't always work out for the best. Yeah. Well, let I me mean, go back. So it is so much better now than it was for, I mean, like we're not in fear of our life for being in an interracial yeah, relationship, yeah. or at least I'm not in fear of my life. Uh-huh. I'm not uh, worried that I'm going to go to jail. Right. Because I'm married to you. Right. Vice versa. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, I, at the same time, I think it's so important for people to realize, like, interracial marriage has only been legal for, what, like, 52 years? 50, only a little over 50 years? Like, yeah. <laughs> I think sometimes we think that all of this stuff happened so, so long ago, but mm-hmm. um, I, I was, I think some states only, like, made it legal in the 90s. Am I right about that? I feel like you might be onto something. Yeah. There. Let me fact check here. Like, I don't think it was to the point where they were, like, arresting people, but I don't think it was, like, officially legal until right. later on. Oh, man. It looks like, I'll have to fact check this later, but it looks like Alabama legalized interracial marriage in 2000. All right, so, like, so like this, this stuff is, I don't know. It, one of the most frustrating things for me are when people think that not talking about race is going to, like, solve racial issues. Because, like, things like this show that this is stuff that obviously still needs to be talked about so much. Like, 2000? That's like... That's our lifetime. I was 10 years old. <laughs> right, exactly. That, that, that blows my mind. Our situation is so, so much better than what a lot of people had to go with. Actually, um, w- when we were dating, I remember my parents uh, got us together with an older interracial couple. Do you remember that? Was it at, like, lunch or dinner with them? I really don't. You don't remember them? No. Now, now I'm second guessing. Was it just me? Like, did I just meet with them, or did we both meet with them? I really. Did you know that? I really like don't remember. Is that this at breaking all. news? So that on might the have channel? just been you. Maybe it was just me. Maybe I think now that I'm thinking about, it, maybe my dad just sat me down, like had me. Maybe my dad just had me like grab dinner with an older couple. That was, or maybe I just dreamed this whole thing. I don't know. <laughs> now I need to fact check that. Well, we're shooting this video. Uh, you're actually on the video right now. Uh, I got a quick question. Okay. Um, did you or dad like set up a lunch or dinner for me before we got married where like I met with an older interracial couple and talked about interracial yes. marriage? Yes, but I don't. Yeah. All right. Was, was that just me or was that me and Amanda? Because like I clearly remember it, but Amanda doesn't remember it at all. both of you but i i'm foggy on the details so i have to ask with dad okay but it did happen it did happen okay all right <laughs> there we go 
<laughs> All right, thanks. Love you. Bye. I wasn't saying it didn't happen. I, I know, I know. <laughs> I, was I, know. Saying, I don't remember. I, I was starting to think I was going crazy, but now I don't. I don't think you were there. I think it was just. I think I was like still. I, I was obviously sure was it I wanted. Before you proposed. I think it was before I proposed, okay. and it was like I was sure I wanted to marry you, but like I wanted to like just talk about someone who had been there, mm-hmm. or talk with someone who had been there. But anyway, obviously, what other generations had to go through is so much worse than what we've oh, had to go yeah. through. And, and I'd say the same with, uh, with with just racial issues in general. Like mm-hmm. I don't have to drink out of separate water fountains. But I think sometimes when people look at the past and think and, and see like how many how how far we've come from the past, Mm -hmm. then they want to think that they don't really think that there's still a ways to go. Right. Exactly. They think that they've, that we've arrived and then that almost invalidates or lessens all the other racial issues that are going on. And then people want to say, Oh, like, no, you can't complain. There's nothing, there's no problems Mm -hmm. because things have gotten so much better. And I definitely feel that as a black man, but I think we kind of see the same thing in our marriage as well. Like it being, yeah. And I mean, like, obviously, I'm not black. I am a white woman. Um, I will never truly know what it's like to be black because I'm not black. But, you know, being married to you, I do have a firsthand experience um, to a lot of issues, to a lot of the ways that you're treated. I see, like, we, even this this summer when we went to that uh, youth baseball game and we we walked up, um, we were going to watch um, another kid that wasn't in our family and we walk up and it's like all white area and like we just see all eyes on us like as we're walking to the baseball field and I just see everybody staring at Chase and you know it's like I I see those things Um, I'm with you in that so let's talk about like some of those struggles right like I feel like we've talked about a lot of them before but like on the channel I don't know like we did you did like a blog post I think I think that was on the 50th I made a, a blog post uh, on the 50th anniversary of when interracial marriage was legalized. Yeah. Um, and, and one of the things I said then, and I'll say again now, like, it's not like we were just blindsided by all of this stuff. Like, no, no, my no. parents told me to expect yeah. it. And, you know, just those people, those people that I met with <laughs> told me to expect it, our, mm-hmm. our friends and all that sort of stuff. I mean, I knew I would face opposition, too, from my family. And right. People in the town where I grew up, just based on how I had heard these people like refer to um, black men and basically comments like, oh, well, so and so is dating a black person. Like, you better never bring a black person home. Right. Like, uh, I'm going to come yeah. back to that in a second. <laughs> Not specifically saying that for my parents, but. Right, right, yeah. No, yeah, no, no. but just like in other households, like I have, yeah. I've heard that. But should, we, should we dive into that now or should we come back to that? I don't know. What do you? <laughs> I'm going to make a note. I'm going okay, okay, to make a note. Okay, okay, make a note. Because I, cause I had another thought. Um, okay. Come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good note. <laughs> there we go. Um, but no, so, so I wanted to go back to, you know, you see all of these issues. Like, you don't fully, uh, obviously, you're not black. Mm-hmm. So you're not fully, like. I don't feel them a lot of times directly happen to me. Right, right. Even though we two are one, and when yeah. you're hurting, I feel your pain. Exactly. But yeah. And, and so that's why I want to get, like, it, it's not too directed to you necessarily, although people have said things, yeah, <laughs> like, directed yeah. to you. What was the YouTube comment we got that someone... I had never heard of of that term before. Oh, what Somebody was Somebody called me something. I probably can't say it. <laughs> probably inappropriate, yeah. yeah. But I was like, what is that? Yeah, I have never even heard of that like, one. I looked it up and met, like, a white person that dates black people. Yeah. Um, but, so, so, so the stuff doesn't happen to you, but you have a greater understanding of that stuff because you see it happening to me, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it, so you can, you can expand on this. But one of the frustrating thing, one of the ways that I see you get frustrated is when people that you know or people that are close to you don't ask you for insight <laughs> into like some of the racial issues. Instead, they form their own thoughts and opinions based off of what people they don't actually know are saying. Yeah. You, you want to expand yeah. it? Yeah. And, and I like this even, you, like you said, like it's it's hurtful and like I'm about to tear up even thinking about it. But 
And I think that's kind of what I was alluding to earlier when I said, um, you know, sometimes being in a modern age can be challenging with technology because all these people, whereas I feel like in the past, if you knew somebody who was in an interracial relationship and there was this stuff going on, like, I feel like you would reach out to them and have like a real conversation with that person to kind of like understand their experiences like firsthand versus like, yeah, turning to someone else that you've found on the internet um, who has the same beliefs as you and, uh, yeah and, and, yeah, and and that's what like that you don't know, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and when it comes, if you're new to this channel, one of the things that I always say, my objective here isn't to try and tell you what to think about certain things. Mm-hmm. I'm just sharing my experiences, and we're just sharing our experiences. We're sharing our life through the vlog, through videos like this, so that you can see a different perspective, and then do with it what you want, right? Yeah. <laughs> but but we're not trying to tell you what to think, but it's still a different perspective that's just neglected by so many people it seems that like (laughs) that like just to feel like our experiences aren't validated or like your personal experiences aren't validated but they don't want to listen to us because that couldn't have possibly happened so they're going to go find information from someone else who has never experienced that before yeah 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 and I guess I guess I'm just so used to that. Yeah. <laughs> that like that's just happened for me my whole life. That <laughs> I know you're far more patient and gracious than I am. <laughs> you really are. I I, I wouldn't say. I, I guess I, that is going to sound like depressing. I'm not I'm not tr- trying to say this to, say, to sound negative, but I guess just more numb <laughs> because it's just. I think we I think I hit on this a little bit with my sister in our video about growing up black in a white environment. Maybe I didn't. I don't remember. But it's like from the time for black black men in America, black individuals in America, men and women are almost conditioned from the time that we're like Ada's age that like if we want to succeed in this country, we have to learn how to make white people comfortable. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm Navigating not, white space. Yeah, ex- exactly. And, and so I could like snap. I could blow up on things that make me frustrated. But it's like. My whole life, I've kind of realized how to navigate that. Mm-hmm. I guess maybe that is being more patient. <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but it's not that you're not patient. It's just that I've like had to deal with it for. Yeah, I'm not as numb to it. Right. And right. I am also an empath, so I like have big emotions. Right. Like, right. I just I care deeply about a lot of things. Hello. <laughs> All right, I'm interrupting this podcast style video right now for a moment from our sponsor. And our sponsor for this episode is the subscribe button. So if you're watching this far, that means you're kind of enjoying what's going on. So if you can hit the subscribe button, that helps YouTube know that you're enjoying this content, recommending it to others. So that's our word. <laughs> what are you doing? Ada. Daddy. Can you, say, can you say subscribe to this channel? Daddy, you can. All right, back to the video. I was thinking back to how you had said, like, it's hurtful when people didn't reach out to me um, who I would have expected to, like, reach out to me to talk to me about these situations or you and I about these situations. Um, And something that I didn't mention was that I did make, like, a Facebook post inviting people to talk to me yeah you know basically saying like please talk to me like have this conversation like i can give you the experience of like a white woman with many close relationships but like i mean i can't give you that first person perspective but like please talk to me about this before you know you go searching and finding all these other answers you know i don't know but like and I got uh, no one, <laughs> not one person reached out to me. Yeah. So, yeah, that was just, that was hard. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, that's kind of what, what we're saying. It's just, mm-hmm. again, not n- not that you have the experience of, of being black, mm-hmm. but 
I think you, I think you'd have the cl- the next closest thing pretty much, and so it's like people instead of like when you're offering <laughs> mm-hmm. to to share your experiences and offering to give a different opinion, it's like people are just completely refusing that. Yeah, and still going with their own thoughts and opinions. Yeah, right. And Which again, our, our a lot we're of not times trying to tend to be hurtful. What'd you say? I said, which a lot of times tend to be hurtful, like, to me or to you, um, which is it's just sad. Yeah. Yeah. Sad. Intentionally or unintentionally right. hurtful. Right. So. so. Uh, speaking of intentionally hurtful or unintentionally hurtful, mm-hmm. now we can come back to that. <laughs> so you were talking about um, people who, right, say, like, don't marry outside of your race. Oh, right? yeah. And it's not just white, whatever, like people who say don't marry outside of your race. One of the things that's always been the most difficult for me was when I would find out that like homes that I would go in and frequent friends that I had that their parents told them, you know, <laughs> I got to be careful because I'm, I'm sure some of the people might even be watching this video. Maybe. Um, and, and so... But there's been many instances with, with friends that I've had, and I know you said friends that you've had, mm-hmm. that it's like, I thought I was close with their parents, but then you find out later that their parents would tell their kids not to date a black guy. or, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. Where they accepted you, but they didn't want you to date their daughter. Right, right. It, it, it's always been, my, my, my dad always told me growing up, to me and my siblings, like we should be way less afraid of the person that's like dropping the N-word and... and on their back. I don't, know if I, can say racist people. I don't know if I can say that word or we'll get just demonetized. Mm-hmm. Um, but racist symbols on their back, mm-hmm. um, like racist tattoos um, or, or, yeah, over, overtly racist people. Obviously, I don't want to be like caught out in the dark with those kind of people. But like, I'm way, that kind of stuff bothers me way less than the people who will like smile to your face and then you find out that they're like, <laughs> closeted rate racist i mean that that is blatant racism like mm-hmm. i'm not just saying that because again i don't want to blanket anyone who disagrees with me as a racist i'm that's not what i'm trying right. to do but like if you tell people not to date a black guy or not to date a white person like that's textbook racism <laughs> right and so i mean i think the same can be said within the church and i don't want to turn this into a church conversation right now but like the people that literally say to me, hey, <laughs> I'm not coming to your church because I won't sit under a black pastor, which has happened. Like that sort of stuff bothers me way less than the people that like smile and all that sort of stuff, but then secretly go home and say that, you know, mm-hmm. and I think it's the same when it comes to our relationship. Mm-hmm. So uh, what else? What else do you want to talk about on this topic? Mm-hmm. So what are some, I guess, challenges just examples. I feel like we spent like that we've minutes. had, like like specific challenges specific. for us, or like just still blanket stuff. Well, I, like for us. All right. Well, I got I got one. This this was kind of like a matter of I don't want to say disagreement with us, but like uh, when it comes to like one of the things that bothered me that you didn't mind and still don't mind is like people's fascination with interracial babies. Right? Oh. Like remember like when when you were pregnant with Ada. Like everyone would be like, oh, like you know, mixed Your babies are so, be so beautiful, and, and and you liked it. I but was to, like, of course, my baby's gonna be beautiful, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. That's but my opinion. but but for me, it was like I don't know. It was like this weird, like I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I, it's been how old's Ada? I shouldn't say how old's Ada. She's three. <laughs> but it's, it's, so it's been almost four years since like people were saying that sort of stuff, mm-hmm. and it's still it just doesn't sit well with me. Yeah. But I can't articulate why. Mm-hmm. It just I don't know. It's like they're. It's like it's not a human. It's like this other thing, like this interracial so, yeah, some baby, like objects, yeah, like to look at. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Like she, like it's like a thing. Like that thing is so like an mm-hmm. animal or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Which was another okay. So here's a disagreement that we did have, or okay. or one. All right, here we go. We'll talk about yeah. like an awkward moment even between us, right? Okay. Was and if you don't want me, if you want me to cut this I out, I guess I will. this could be like another topic of like things. Because of our different cultures yeah. that we grew up in, like that, 
we've had to navigate. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, can yeah. I go with one? Yeah. And I'm not slamming you at all, but you remember one of the first major disagreements we had about race when it came to Ada was like the term like little monkey, right? Like, remember that? And, and how like, um, like some of, like your friends and sometimes your family, like she'd be crawling around and it's like, oh, like you're a little monkey. And like, and, and it wasn't meant yeah. in a racist, racist way at all. Right. But like Just to me, kind of a term that you would use with any baby, right? Exactly. Who is like climbing around, yeah. Right, and then to me, like when I heard people who are white say that about Ada, it's like triggering. Like every red flag went off. Like, yeah. what'd you just call my daughter? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. And, and so that was something we had to navigate because, like, I, I think it was mm-hmm. even like, wasn't there a time when she was watching shows and like I didn't want her making like the monkey noises around? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So that was something we had to navigate. Mm-hmm. What have I? Done? I'm sure I've done. Well, no, there's been another topic that we're still not, like, fully on the same page with, I think. Let's go. Let's expose it. Here we go. But I think I can now understand where you're coming from. On I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think of what it is. I feel, like I, I feel like I know, but I don't know. What is it? Education. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. just because... I'm kind of in the mindset of like, don't go into crippling student loan debt if you know that you want to work like in a trade, like just go to trade school and then go into your trade. Whereas I know that for you, it's like not even an option. Like, no, you're going to college, like you're getting a degree. Like, I don't care if you want to be a welder, like you're gonna be the most educated welder like out there. <laughs> so. Right, right. And, yeah. and- yeah, I mean, I'd say that's the cultural difference that we've had to navigate. And, mm-hmm. um, wh- whereas it, it's ingrained in me that not that you have to be educated to succeed when you're black, mm-hmm. but like it's it's important to be educated when you're black in order for people to see you as like equals, I guess, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, and I can, after several conversations about this, right? Yeah, I, mean, I feel like was, I can now understand your point of view. Right, but that was definitely one... Uh, cultural difference that we yeah that we were just like i don't understand like why you wouldn't think this and i can i'm like i can understand i can't understand why you can't see right, the way right. i'm thinking yeah exactly so that was a big cultural difference between us i guess <laughs> i mean there, there were things that we had to get used to right like like my family is loud yeah <laughs> those black people are just loud <laughs> like and that took a while for you to get used to right? yeah <laughs> it took a while for you to get used to um and on the flip side, like I've had to get used to your family events not being as loud. Yeah. <laughs> like the first couple times I thought people were just mad <laughs> at, me, <laughs> at me and at each other. And I realized like, it's just a cultural difference. Like, yes, it is. <laughs> um, if we're yelling at each other in my family, that means that things are going great. If we're quiet at our family dinners, that means that there's a problem. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, can you think of anything else? I don't know. I probably will think of something as soon as we end this video. Probably. But yeah, it's getting. Uh, I think uh, we're probably getting well, to. What are some? We uh, well, just real quick. What are some benefits? Well, I mean, <laughs> th- th- that could be a whole nother video, right? Like, in yeah. all seriousness, because I think, and shoot, did we just spend like most of this video talking about the negatives? We might have. Actually. I feel like we did. Like, we almost need like but a part two. We did it two. with a smile. Yeah. Well, I mean, there are a lot of benefits, right? Like Mm -hmm. it allows you to understand the black community a little bit more and it understands, it allows me to understand those who are white a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, Mm -hmm. Um, I know there've been times when you're like, is this just a white people thing? Like, right, right, right. And and that probably needs more clarification. (laughs) Uh, I mean, I can think of funny examples. Yeah. That's what I'm referring to. Okay. Yeah. Like I didn't know that. You get sunburn like at least once a year. He didn't even know what a sunburn was. I, I knew what a sunburn was. I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, but like my skin was like red like a lobster, and you didn't realize it was a sunburn. Uh, I, I, you I, kept I, touching me. <laughs> so right. I mean, this painful. is like this is like back when we we're dating. This isn't like something we've learned in the last year. But like, I didn't know. <laughs> these these are just ridiculous examples. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't know that white people, many white people get red and then you're like tan for the rest of the summer. Like I didn't know that that was like an annual process that you go through, right? And you didn't know that 
certain things about like cutting my hair and mm -hmm. and I'd say some nice benefits is that there's always lotion in the house mm -hmm. and there's always mac and cheese. That's true. That's true. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, uh, like all the benefits, though, I mean, those are all little and funny things. Yeah. I, I think overall, I think the biggest benefit is just we kind of have a foot in both worlds, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so it allows us to relate a little more. I guess, shoot, I don't want to go back into the negative. This can be a whole different video, uh, this topic here, because one of the things that I struggle with that I wonder if you feel a sense at all is to some degree there is a level of because we're because I'm in an interracial marriage that some people who are black even don't think that I have the full right to speak into black issues. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think it, who was it? Um, Talking about the church comment. The church comment, oh, you oh yeah, when we first, when we first uh, moved back up here in Ohio, yeah, that too. I uh, just should I share that? You don't need to. Okay, <laughs> leave you guys in suspense. Yeah, but um, so Donald Glover's wife is white, right? And so I remember a big backlash that he got when he was when he either married her or started dating her or something, and a lot of people within the black community were like. How are you going to be able to talk about black issues if you can't even date someone who's black, right? Mm -hmm. So that's something that I've had to deal with. I feel like I feel like I've received it in a sense of like, why do you have to steal our like one of our good men? Someone said that because that's when you start exposing me, and then they're like, "Oh, good thing you got rid of him." <laughs> no, it was it was mentioned in my presence, but not about me. Okay. It was like a, it was a comment that was made in my presence about someone else, but then it was like they realized I was there, and it's like, oh, but not you. We love you, mm. but like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, this goes back to kind of the feeling that I felt being black in predominantly white environments, the sense of a lot of white people distance themselves from me because I'm clearly not white. Yeah. Um, but also, to some extent, sometimes even those who are black don't look at me as fully black, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Is that the same for you? Like, do you... I, I can't imagine someone saying, like, you're not white enough. <laughs> no. I don't, I don't think I've... I don't think I've experienced that yeah. in that respect. Yeah. No. That, that could go... I've uh, been... You know, I've gotten the comment of, like, Oh well, you don't look like the type of girl that should be with a black guy. Which I, what does that but, mean? What yeah, type of girl should be with a? What does that mean? I don't know what type of white girl is supposed to be with a black guy. Um, is that a stereotype? I guess so. But uh, really, is there like a stereotype for like black guys that are dating white women? Yeah, I don't. That's I don't know. I uh, somebody had uh, said that to me before, but hmm, interesting. All right, there's so much more that we could talk about. I mean, because so I, I, I wanted to talk more about like parenting and stuff like that too. Let me say, if, if you guys actually made it to the end of this video, if anybody watched to the end, uh, let us know uh, if you'd be interested in say maybe a part two to this conversation. One of the things that I thought would be cool, um, I don't know why I'm processing this like while we're still rolling, but like getting several interracial couples together to sit down and talk about the different experiences we've all had mm -hmm. especially like even multi-generational oh yeah i think that would be really because i'm sure we're not the only ones that have had these experiences oh no definitely not and uh so i think it might be if that's something you guys would be interested in seeing leave a comment and i think too also depending on where you live it can be a different experience just yeah. thinking back to like when we lived in dallas first living in ohio yeah different experiences you have yeah. there yeah you think we'd face opposition if we lived in antarctica the penguins for sure <laughs> hey the penguins are black and white so you know that's true interracial that's all true. the way anyway if you guys enjoyed this episode let us know maybe we'll do another video like this um but i'm excited that this channel is kind of coming back to life because the video don't say that what do you mean every time you say that then it's like another like You're six right. months i will you never make another youtube video again on this channel <laughs> I don't know if they could see me wink because my glasses are clear. I love your winking though. It's so cute. <laughs> <laughs>
tried so hard. I will not make a video again for several months. Anyway, if you like this video, uh, let us know in the comments. Leave a like, plus, plus subscribe. Man, it has been so long since I made a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. Press subscribe, subscribe into this channel. Just helps us with the YouTube algorithm and let them know that, uh, that people actually enjoy these videos that we're putting out. And as always, I will see you guys on another video.